<laughs> G'day folks, I'm Mick from Sale from Iron Man 4x4. Let's discuss the controversial subject of bull bars, underbody plates, side steps, battery equipment, canopies, roof racks, sliding systems, water storage, additional fuel, everything that can be done. Dun, dun, da, dun, dun. Good day folks and welcome to another Ironman 4x4 Tech Talk video. My name is Mick and this morning we're answering more viewers questions. We love getting the questions, we love answering them, so please do keep them coming. As always, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, John Smith, who writes to us every so often, asks the following. What modifications do I need to make to my new Hilux 4x4 double cab? I plan to overland and tour extensively with my family. Good on you, John. Great vehicle. This is Dirk's uh, Hilux dual cab. Fully kitted out. Loves it. Uh, I, in fact, like driving it from time to time as well. So I'm gonna give you some do's and don'ts when it comes to modifying your four wheel drive for overlanding. And then we'll get onto a list of things that I think you should be looking at first. The important thing to do first is to put together a budget on how much do you think you want to spend on your vehicle to enable you to go overlanding with your family. Folks, one of the most important considerations when fitting gear to your vehicle to enable you to go places where normal vehicles cannot go is that you should never compromise on the safety of the vehicle or the safety of your family. Do not fit cheap gear. If it's cheap, it will let you down. Cross-border vehicle recovery is very expensive. It's unpleasant and it'll certainly spoil your trip. Have a clear view of what it is that you want to achieve with this build on your vehicle and build your vehicle accordingly. One last thing I'll mention before we get to my list of top modifications to do to your vehicle. Bear in mind that as you use your vehicle and as you go on trips and spend time with your family in your vehicle, things will change. Things you've done to the vehicle and modifications you made will have to be unmodified or changed. It really is an evolving process and be ready for that. So onto my list of important modifications from top to bottom, as I always do them. The very first thing that I do, and it's probably on a global scale, the biggest four-wheel drive modification that is done to our vehicles before we take them off-road, and that is tires. The original vehicle manufacturer, when they design and build these vehicles and they sell them to you, they fit them with highway terrain, two-ply, lightweight, light-duty tires. And they do this for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, they're cheaper than proper rugged off-road tires. And secondly, they're lighter, they have less rolling resistance, and it uses less fuel. And vehicle manufacturers, especially nowadays, are all about emissions. So in trying to keep the emissions down, they fit them with smooth, lightweight, highway tires. No good for us overlanding folk. So you're going to have to replace those tires with rugged, at least a three-ply all-terrain tire, and if you're doing a lot of mud and sand driving, perhaps even a mud terrain tire. A lot of the late model dual cab four wheel drives, especially the more luxury models, are now coming out with 18 inch rims and sometimes even 19 and 20 inch rims. Now these are no good when you're trying to fit a 30 and a half inch diameter tire because there's not much sidewall height, therefore airing the tires down is less successful. So we always like to drop back down to a 17 inch rim uh, with a 65 or a 70 profile tire. It just allows for better airing down when you're off-roading. Folks, number two on my list, and it relates directly to number one, which is tires, is a good tire pressure monitor system. I use one this year alone. It has saved my bacon twice. I had two instances where I had a tire pressure drop. The alarm bell sounded, I pulled over, and I was able to save the life of that tire by plugging it and carrying on down the road. A good tire pressure monitoring system might be a couple of thousand rand, but it is way cheaper than a new all-terrain tire. More importantly, a tire that's deflating, undetected, can have catastrophic results for you and your vehicle. Number three on my list, probably less to do with the vehicle and more to do with where you're going, is a good mapping system. Some people prefer paper maps, but I prefer offline electronic maps on my phone. I have an Apple CarPlay system in my vehicle and my maps are displayed on the head unit inside the vehicle. Not all vehicles have that capability, so you might want to consider changing the head unit in the vehicle to allow for that capability. Next on my list, and this being a dual cab vehicle, is a good canopy. Now folks, back in the day, all we had were fiberglass canopies and they were great for keeping the tub of your vehicle dry and safe and relatively dust-free. 
But nowadays, with serious overlanding, we're loading a lot of stuff onto the roof of our canopies. Fortunately for us, nowadays, we have metal canopies, either aluminium or stainless steel. These canopies lend themselves well to carrying additional load on top of them, be it rooftop tents or roof racks with some gear up there. Along with the canopy in the back of the tub of your vehicle, you'll also want to consider a good dust proofing system. I personally hate dust and you're going to hate dust when it starts getting into your clothing bags and into your packing system. It's never great. So invest in a very good dust kit. Your wife will love you for it. A lot of these metal canopies have side doors that open and in those side apertures it enables you to get right into the front of the tub um, of the vehicle where all your gear is stored. Some of them also have window boxes. You can fit a kitchen in, or you can fit some electrics up there. They're very, very versatile. They have internal tables. There's just a plethora of product available on the market and they're a real good investment. The next important thing for me on a personal level is the vehicle electrics. And it has to do with lighting and refrigeration when you're overlanding and camping. The important thing to note about your vehicle electrics is that you should not run your camping electrics, that's your lighting and your refrigeration, from the vehicle's main battery. You're going to need a second battery, a deep cycle battery, which is separate from the vehicle's own cranking battery, from which you can power any lighting or any refrigeration that you have in your vehicle. As soon as you fit a second battery, you're going to need a very good battery management system. Folks, there's nothing worse than camping or overlanding and your fridge is not running, your food is spoiling, and even worse than that, there's no ice for the gin and tonic. It's terrible. Our battery systems and deep cycle batteries are not cheap. There are various types of batteries. You can start with flooded cell, lead acid batteries, right up to lithium ion batteries, which are five, six times the price. Depending on your budget, you need to invest in a good quality deep cycle battery and a very good quality battery management system. A charging system that will allow that battery to remain charged. Um, you may want to use solar if you're not driving the vehicle and that battery is not being charged by the vehicle's alternator. You're going to have to look at solar. Um, if you're camping at a campsite where there is 220 volt power, you might need a built in 220 volt charger so that you can top up the battery. All of those things have to do with battery management and the vehicle's electronics. Folks, as with everything, uh, as far as vehicle accessories is concerned, the cheaper you go, the nastier it is, and the sooner you're going to be let down. So spend some money on some good quality electrical gear in your vehicle. Folks, if you're gonna be overlanding uh, to faraway places where fuel is an issue, the availability of fuel, you're going to have to carry additional fuel. There's two ways of doing it. You either fuel up some jerry cans and put them on the roof rack, which lifts the center of gravity of the vehicle, heavy weight up there, it's never a good idea. Or you can fit an auxiliary fuel tank, which is a better idea. On your dual cab Hilux, that will be a 60 liter additional fuel tank. It will reside under the chassis of the vehicle above the spare wheel. The spare wheel will drop down about 40 to 50 mils and you will have an additional 60 liters of fuel over and above the 85, 86 liters uh, of the standard tank. Filled very easily in the same manner as you fill the main tank. In fact, you won't notice that you're doing anything else other than standing at the pumps for a little longer, but that'll just give you some peace of mind, additional fuel, especially when fuel stops are far apart. Folks, the next thing on my list is a toolkit. Now, I'm no mechanic, I don't enjoy it. My best toolkit sometimes is a can of petrol and some matches. Thankfully, I've never had to resort to it. But in seriousness, have a basic toolkit with you, spanners, screwdrivers, uh, vice clamps, side cutters, pliers, a little hammer. All of those things can come in handy if you have a failure, a vehicle failure or an accessory failure or something. You don't want to be stuck there with a bolt that you need to tighten or or, or loosen and you don't have any tools with you. So have a small roll of the essential tools with you. If you don't have it, you're gonna need it. Uh, hopefully, if you do have it, you won't need it. Folks, I've just realized that tires were very high on my list, but there's two important tire accessories that I didn't mention and that you really should have in your vehicle if you're doing any type of overlanding. If you're doing overlanding, you're going to have to adjust the tire pressure in your vehicle. You're gonna to have to air down when you go off-road and you're gonna to have to blow the tires back up when you hit the tar. So a very good high airflow compressor is a must and also a very good tire deflator. Something that'll allow you to deflate the tires very quickly and very accurately. Bear in mind that if it's difficult to do that, you're going to be reluctant to do it with uh, dire consequences to your off-roading. So have a good compressor, have a good tire a deflator and adjust your tire pressures to the conditions that you're traveling. in. Folks, when you're overlanding, you're going to have to take a lot of gear with you, clothing, food and other camping gear. 
it's very important that you do not exceed the gross vehicle mass of your vehicle. You need to be very aware of how much additional weight you're putting onto your vehicle accessory wise. How much is the bull bar weighing? How much heavier are the tires? All of those things. And then over and above that, when you pack your vehicle and head out on your trip, you need to know how much that stuff weighs. If you have to carry additional gear that won't fit inside the vehicle, you can put it on top on your roof rack, but bear in mind that you don't want to put heavy stuff up there. It'll affect the handling of the vehicle. You'll be raising the center of gravity of the vehicle. Keep the heavy stuff down low and put the light stuff up on top of the roof. So folks, that is my list of the important things that you have to do. There's, of course, all kinds of other stuff you have to do. But at the end of the day, once you start accessorizing your vehicle and adding gear to it, bull bars, winches, snorkels, underbody protection plates, canopies, roller systems, fridges, all of those things, you're going to lose ride height in the vehicle. The vehicle's gonna squat down onto the ground and you're going to have to assist that vehicle by fitting an uprated suspension kit. An uprated suspension kit is going to allow your vehicle to carry the additional load from the accessories and your overlanding gear at a better ride height. It's gonna be more comfortable and it's gonna be a lot safer. Folks, there are so many other things that you could fit to your vehicle, but that is my top list of what you should do. I hope that helps you, John. By all means, get in touch with us and uh, come and have a chat. We'll give you some good advice. Folks, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified of when we post some more readers' questions. Take care.